I was just wondering over the debate that Rob and, uh, and Frank just started, whether you feel pain or you don't feel pain would determine whether you are a human being, you are not a human being, whether you deserve some rights, you don't deserve some rights. I mean, I mean instead of giving them as like, whether this, these are the uh, finite rights you have as a natural human being, or these are the infinite rights you have as a cy I mean, cyborg or whatever. So just thinking, because if you just lay down a fundamental set of, say, universal declaration of so-called human rights, you would just start think to put the value on how much, how much you put the value on, on as a, as a, a human being, and how, what kind of external rights would you like to provide to a cyborg or or which it does not possess as a as a natural human beings and and also you can some intrinsically as a natural human beings you may have some rights which what we term as fundamental human rights to be born as a natural human being but you can always provide some external rights whether they feel pain or they don't feel pain about well, I mean, whether they are responsive or they are not responsive in any stage of their life. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is uh, Richard. Yes, I'm, I'm a bit worried about saying, I'm a bit worried about saying that you won't give the robots rights because you don't know whether it has an internal life or not. Because as far as I'm concerned, I can't, uh, to put it bluntly, I can't tell that you have an internal mental life. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. So, does the fact that you don't know justify denying the rights? I think that's a very difficult problem. And um, I don't, I don't have any answer to that at all. But uh, and I don't know whether uh, making the machine more and more intelligent and putting, giving it more sensory input is at some kind time going to give it a soul or not. But. Uh, we're not going to be able to prove whether it does or not. We're not going to know if there is a transition point. So are we going to continue denying uh, these machi machines' rights, no matter how intelligent they come, become, no matter how much they might seem like us or not? You're right. In fact, we can't deny that we have no evidence that rocks don't have uh, come. Yes. <laughs> I think they might come and take their own rights when they tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> You were asking about um, how we might uh, treat robots or whether or not to give them rights and whether or not pain uh, may be a reason to give rights. Perhaps intelligence is another reason to give rights. But the uh, question that you also raised with the danger is not necessarily how we treat the robots but how the robots may treat us and whether they will have right, give us rights when we become analogous to the poodle in your example in comparison to the robots. And to one um, answer to that question before I let you answer, maybe to uh, have a, with cyborgization that would create a symbiotic relationship between the machines and the humans in which both um, the machine benefits from the humans and the human from the machines. Um, in other words, perhaps humans have different forms of intelligence, perhaps emotional intelligence, which may benefit the machines, um, so it would make it less likely for them to dominate us with competition, but rather what, like what Irina said, if nature can work in cooperation. Um, so perhaps that's one answer to the problem of m machine or robots dominating humans, is if we accept our differences and work together. But, um, do you, what, what's your thoughts on the um, likelihood of robots taking over humans and what can we do perhaps to prevent this? Yeah. <coughs> <coughs>
お互い協力し,まし,し合えばうまくいくんじゃないかということですけどロボットはどっちを選ぶと思いますか<笑><笑>人に強調すると思いますから、その人を支配しようと思います。probably the robots don't like that their situation as a slave. So I s a i to her, w a between robots and humans. <laughs> Thank you for a wonderful presentation. <laughs> Very thought provoking. I wonder if we have reached the point in our own history of evolution that we are now conscious of our own evolution. In some sense, the first half of philosophy spent all of their energy. Focusing on reason as a way to differentiate human from animals. Now there's a great deal of attention on emotions, probably to <coughs> differentiate us from machines. But if machines can feel and we take animal parts into our bodies, in 500 years down the road, we will be something different. We will have evolved. But I think you're raising such a critical question because, in some sense, the history of ethics is a history of the group who is in the group and who is not in the group, who is worth protecting and who is not worth protecting. So, back to Irina's point and Morgan's point about cooperation, then, if we truly are not going to be human central and if we have enough. Perhaps imagination to get beyond where we thought we left off with Galileo,、um, then your question becomes an absolutely critical one. Absolutely critical. I know in animal rights work for now, there is real concerted effort to give rights to chimpanzees and the higher primates because they are intelligent, more intelligent than most babies. Thank you.、Um, Ali.、Uh, and I'm sorry, but after that, what? Okay, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>、uh, just, we are talking about human rights, but we should not forget that human rights is not based on intelligence or a race, even or something else.、Uh, how we treat other human invention now? We will treat them later. And maybe we are getting mature to give more rights to animals. It means we are trying to treat them better. One reason is our save,、uh, ourselves. We are treating them better because of ourselves. And how we treat other things that it's like other invention of human beings, we will treat them later, maybe. Hundred years later, we will treat them. And it, I, it seems to me there's no need to think that does it need to give them human rights or not. We should think how we should treat them in a human community as how we treat animals, how we treat other machines. Thank you.、Um, I'll pass it to Eva, who didn't have a chance to talk yet. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Oh, I don't need. <laughs> Do I? This table, maybe these two tables. <laughs> no, I, I think I speak loud enough. Okay.、Um, first of all, I、uh, do not know anything about technology. <laughs> Second of all, I think that thinking about robots taking over human is something that will happen in so far in the future, if. And, and I'm thinking in a more. Since I'm a medical doctor, I'm thinking in a more medical way. I mean, if、uh, I'm thinking about what is possible now, if I have a car accident and lose a leg, and have a possibility to have an artificial leg implanted, I'm 
I want to be able to have this kind of leg because I want to be able to walk like before. But I don't think that this leg is going to start to control my body. I mean, we are talking about something that perhaps is going to happen so far in the future. I think we should, in this part of the problem, uh, concentrate on what is happening now. Because we must acknowledge that technology is very useful to us, especially in the field of medicine. Artificial heart, artificial blood vessels, leg joints. I mean, we can use it. I don't think that we have to fear that they, that they will take control of our body. Okay, now. I'm, what about an What about an artificial brain? <laughs> Is there a possibility to create an artificial brain? I mean, maybe a chip that can do something, but not a brain. A brain is much more than just transmission of ele electricity in, in, in our body. I mean, it's um, I'll give Tsuyoshi a chance to reply, and then several people want to ask questions, and we have to go into have it uh, in lunch time. Sorry, uh, because we're not so, robots. Saishon, I'm Saishon, Ari, uh, I want to refer to you. So, he was a human being. 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 Based on yeah, 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 yeah. So human rights, uh, human dignity is a kind of illusion uh, which make, which humans make. Um, I do this. So, uh, two, two ways. So. The rights uh, we may or may not give the robots to the human robots or high um, the <coughs> animals which speaks uh, similar rights, similar human rights to them. Okay, so but actually, if you can speak in the 1998 <laughs> Okay, so we could change the we could change the concept of what a person is, so that they begin to have human rights. Yeah, that's one the same way. Changing the notion of human. Mm -hmm. So, two things are, so, human concept is the same, is the same. But, the Kyosun Kyo Kyo the Wa will So, leave the concept of a human, human, or what human means. As the same, but increase the uh, change the sphere of the coexistence and co prosperity within the, which we operate. We can have some obje these objects without changing human rights conception. If we There's no uh, need to change it, why we no, should? Yeah. So I think that's what he's say what's what so he's trying to say in, the se in his second <laughs> argument. That we don't have to change what the hum human rights are, and we don't have to change what our idea of a human is. But instead, we expand uh, the way we expand the group with which we share our own prosperity and our own, um, with which we coexist on an equal footing. Human's 
So human dignity and human rights are things which people have made. Thank you very much. Okay, Robin, just a final question. I hope you won't be punished uh, for crashing the computer after it, uh, it beat us in chess. <laughs> it was in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sorry I had to stop the discussion. Um, it's partly to respect your um, human rights. <laughs> and, uh, by the way, the robots can start at 1.15, but the rest of you can start the second session at 2 o'clock. <laughs> and uh, I would like, just before closing, to introduce several people who did not introduce themselves at the beginning of the conference. Please, uh, uh, Honourable TR, every TRT he's come to, <coughs> you'll introduce yourself. My name is Sinan Bao, medical doctor at Medical Clinic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, please go along. And who did not introduce uh, at the beginning? Fumi, you're not there? Um, my name is Julie. I'm someone who has been in the past. Margaret, you're new. My name is Margaret Slavon. I'm from University. I'm an anthropologist. So, Yoshi, you're just speaking. You're in the University of Boston. My name is Yoshi. I'm a. Uh, I'm, uh, um, my profession is medical law uh, and biotics, but this kind of presentation is a, a kind of hobby. <laughs> 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 and, uh, uh, my name is Yoshihiro Okada. Uh, I'm a student of the Darius Lab. Any other body you are missing? You did not introduce? Okay, well, now just for lunch, let me uh, explain. Microphone, please. Microphone, please. So my talk is Confucian Ideas in the Chinese Mind, Underlying Moral Decision Making. The traditional Confucian culture has had a deep impact on the shaping and the development of the ideas of Chinese people. In this paper, I would like to share a few thoughts about uh, Confucian views in facing modern bioethical debates. Yes, please. Confucian ideas of persons. Yes, please. Manchin's idea of a moral person is argued as follows. When I say all men have, a la have the mind which cannot bear to see the suffering of others, my meaning may be illustrated. Now, when men suddenly see a child about to fall into a well, they all have a feeling of alarm and distress. Now to gain friendship with child parents, no to <coughs> take the grace of their neighbors and friends, no because they dislike the reputation of lack of humanity if they did not rescue the child. For such a case, we see that a man without the feeling of commiseration is not a man. A man without the feeling of shame and dislike is not a man. A man without the feeling of deference and compliance is not a man. And a man without the feeling of right and wrong is not a man. The feeling of commiseration is the beginning of humanity. Then, the feeling of shame and dislike is the beginning of righteousness. E. The feeling of deference and compliance is the beginning of propriety, the, and the, the feeling of right and wrong is the beginning of wisdom, zhi. So the people with capacities of ren, yi, li, zhi are regarded as a virtuous person. Yes, please. As Dr. Tsai has argued, the Confucian concept of a moral person is expressed as a junzi, 
the moral person. A Jinzi in Confucian ethics is a person of high moral achievement who constantly try to improve and cultivate themselves to attain various stages of perfections. He is a man of human humaneness then and rationalist E. He pursues harmony and unity with universal moral order, the Tao, the way. Yes, please. Besides being an autonomous person, Junzi has another important feature as emphasized in Confucian ethics in relational perspectives. A Confucian person is socially situated, defined, and shaped in a relational context where he must achieve them through, uh, through interactions with others. To examine Confucian ideas of person is a key to many moral dilemmas of practical medical issues in contemporary China. Um, so let's ask example a few to illustrate ideas that would be important to include in the construction of a mental map. Next please. Moral status of fitters and health first. The third greatest Confucian Xunzi side. Birth is the beginning of a person, and death is the end of a person. If one has a good birth and a good death, then he fulfills the Tao of Nantan. The human fitters has value, but it has not been treated <coughs> as a person. A person is an entity that has body or shape and psyche and has rational, emotional, and social relational capacities. Yes, please. A human being is a part of family and a community. Confucian ideas are very much concerned about uh, a human relationship. A person is a relational person who <coughs> cannot survive without support from others. Yes, please. From the Confucian point of view, we could understand the physician-family relationship in China. The family has a responsibility to take care of sick members. Physicians take all the opinions of the patient family into account. Medical decision-making is made or agreed by the family as a whole. In this sense, family values and the common good may let the patient to reconcile the right of autonomous decision making to to the preferred um, preferential choice of family or society. Informed consent is not given by individual patient, but by the family <coughs> as a whole. Next, please. Death is a taboo in Chinese mind. Next, please. Tim, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Confucian ethics put greater emphasis on the doctor's duty to help others. Saving life is regarded as the highest virtue. Life is the most precious good, whereas death should be awarded. The, the analyst of Confucian wrote that death and life belonging to destiny, and the wealth and rank are determined by fate. Next, please. Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism all consider that life and death are destined, and destined by fate and reflect the will of heaven and cannot be changed by human power. In, uh, therefore, everyone should fulfill his life from birth to death naturally. Next, please. Ideas of health and uh, genetic diseases in cultural context. Yes, please. Chinese traditional medicine does not use the word jiankang, which means uh, uh, health. The Yellow Emperor's classic of internal medicine defined health as an indication of the cultural position as yin and yang. It considers that health is the balance of yin and yang. Excess or deficiency of yin or yang will cause illnesses. Genetic diseases can, due to the imbalance of between yin and yang, the Confucian principle for dealing with the ethical issues of biotechnology is Tao, the way. A moral person practices the Tao not only to develop their self, 
but uh, also to help others. Yes, please. This aspect of morality is pressed in the doctrine of men as follows. Only those who are absolutely sincere can fully develop their nature. If they can fully develop their nature, they can fully develop the nature of others. If they can fully develop the nature of others, they can fully develop the nature of things. If they can fully develop the nature of things, they can assist in the transforming and nourishing process of heaven and earth. If they can assist in the transforming and nourishing process of heaven and earth, they can thus form a trinity with heaven and earth. It regards biotechnology uh, bio as an act of great virtue to help others who suffer from diseases. There are uh, numerous natural defects that need the help of human beings to improve. Next, please. Confucian ethics is virtual ethics. Yes, please. Mm. Medicine is regarded in Confucian culture as <coughs> an art of humaneness. Even Ren Shu. Ren, humaneness means loving people, caring for people, and doing good to people. A Chinese adage said, if you could not become a prime minister, then become a doctor. The responsibility of physician is the same as a private ministry uh, to practice Ren. Next, please. The famous Tang Dynasty physician Sun Simiao said, if a patient requests help, one may not consider whether he is rich or poor, superior or inferior, old or young, beautiful or ugly, a Chinese or Bambari, <coughs> dark or intelligent. All patients must be regarded in the same manner that they were the closest of, uh, kin, of kin. And he also indicated that the physician should be indifferent to the vows, as he wrote in his book, The Essence of Great Medicine. In sexual prescriptions worth a thousand gold prices, physicians may not use their skills for commerce. Okay, before conclusions, I, I want to show you uh, uh, pictures. Take a moment. Sorry. <laughs> This is confusion. <laughs> this thing? Okay, just a, just a Okay. It's just a picture. Um, it's mean, um, that's a Chinese sentence that uh, one of Confucius' uh, apprentices, Zigong, asked, is there a single concept? that we, could, uh, we can take as a guide for the actions of our whole life. And the Confucian said, at the sentence says, do not impose on others what you yourself do not desire. So it's okay. <laughs> just a, just a tip. So my conclusion is, the basic Confucian idea is then, who, uh, which means loving people, the golden rule is what you do not wish for yourself, do not do to others. And after establishing yourself, you should have others to establish themselves. After you develop yourself, you should have others to develop themselves. From the arrangement of morality in China, the moral principles of Ren, Humaneness, Yi, Righteousness, Li, Propriety, and Zhi, Wisdom, could be key ideas for the mental mind. People with such a moral character are regarded as a virtuous person. The guiding principles in most cultures for our lives share the common ideas of Ren and I, humaneness and love. We could see the idea of love for others in traditional Confucianism and today, as well as in other cultures. Confucianism has long been a representative of traditional Chinese thought, and it has a directive social, political, educational, sorry, sorry, uh, educational and moral actions in Chinese society for more than 2,000 years. 
The ancient Chinese medical ethics was also established on the foundation of Confucian ethics. Traditional Confucian culture has impacted deeply on the development of the ideas of the Chinese mind. It views in facing new bioethics issues brought about by recent advances in medicine could be seen as offering important contributions to the ongoing development of Chinese society. The Confucian thought should not be ignored, even though the solution of contemporary Chinese bioethics dilemmas can't be found only in, only in the histor uh, historical dimensions because they are fundamental construct to what we might call the Chinese mind. Yes, please. Oh, thank you very much for your attention. <coughs> and I want... Oh, sorry. Nice. Yes. Yes, finish. <laughs> thank you very much for your attention. And I want to welcome you to the Beijing International Conference on Bioethics in April in this year. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, Maureen, please. Yeah. Thank you very much for a nice talk. Uh, not a question, but just a comment. So you mentioned about the medicine is an art of perfect virtue. And actually, we introduced that idea in the 15th to 16th century from China. And we still use uh, medicine is an art of perfect virtue that to uh, serve for patients. But actually, the meaning of art of perfect virtue is now changing. So we are now adopting the Western idea from Chinese, Chinese bioethics, Western bioethics. Thank you. Um, John? Oh, I don't think I need um, <laughs> Almost all of the conversation today has come up around moral decision making, as if morality was only a matter of decisions. And yet, as a virtue ethics in Confucianism, I'm, I'm wondering, um, is there anything else that you could say be about how Confucianism would inform all of our ethical experience and not just the part that makes decisions. For instance, what about moral sensitivity? I mean, much of ethics is about what we are sensitive to, what we see as causing harm and pain to others, and not just about making a decision. Probably not being very clear here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me explain your question. Make sure <laughs> you, you mean the, um, uh, aside, um, apart from moral decision making, that uh, um, what uh, uh, Confucian's uh, access uh, how say to high power others uh, as aspect in in the issue of bioethics, right? Yeah, yes. How is it that we come to name something a certain way that leads us to feel a certain way and to respond a certain way? That seems to me a different kind of ethical issue than making a decision about something. It is about how we get sensitized to certain kinds of issues. And it would seem to me that well, I'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think, uh, yeah, it's really a uh, Confucian, the traditional Confucian ethics ideas that uh, affect the Chinese people's mind uh, for more than 2,000 years. Apart from their um, moral, as, uh, moral directions uh, for decision making, uh, there are all kinds of uh, uh, errors that uh, also direct uh, Chinese people's uh, thinking and actions. Uh, uh, like uh, medicine and the art of humanities, 
and and uh, uh, yeah, in many uh, in many areas, I think uh, not not just uh, to uh, in the areas of disability, <coughs> in many it, there have good aspect and uh, bad aspect, uh, aspect as well, and also um, uh, have uh, um, influence of Chinese peoples to um, facing the ethical dilemmas in contemporary Chinese society in practical medical um, ethic issues. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, Similar question to that of the lady. John. 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 Um, you've been talking about morality and the Chinese mind, and I was wondering uh, to what extent can you say this Chinese mind is different from other kinds of minds? Um, how, how have you come to the conclusion that the Chinese mind can be found in every Chinese person? And I also wonder, because you gave us a suggestion about linking it, your talk to the uh, human mapping, to the mapping of ideas. And I was wondering if you can draw that line around the Chinese mind. Uh, does this mean that this kind of Confucian representation uh, will be the thing that you would put into the mental map? I hope I can remember all of your questions. So first, <laughs> uh, first, uh, yes, is um, Chinese man. What's the difference between Chinese man to other cultures, right? Uh, yes, um, I think it's, uh, yeah, in some uh, um, aspect, it's a quite different concept of a person and the moral decision making between Chinese people. Uh, Wait, uh, to the others, uh, some Western countries, for example, um, uh, how about, uh, yeah, some, uh, uh, m many uh, countries uh, has uh, admitted the uh, concept of brain dice and uh, uh, organ donations after dice. And in several countries, like, like your countries, the Netherlands, um, the euthanasia has, um, has a uh, Beijing meeting, but uh, for for Chinese people, yeah, for uh, I think is uh, for the uh, tradition uh, traditional cultures of uh, 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 fact the Chinese mind. The Chinese people rela uh, reluctant to to accept uh, the concept of green dice and uh, to uh, unwilling to donate uh, organs after dies and. Uh, and the use neither is uh, same, not a practice in Chinese society. I think it's different. And <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but I don't think you understood my question. Um, culture is not the same as a Chinese mind. That would be one of my points. And another point would be, um, is this Chinese mind something that all Chinese have? Do they all have this uh, belief in Ren, I, Li, Yi? Because many Chinese people I know do not uh, regard themselves as such Confucian minds. So I was wondering whether you would like to put this representation of the Chinese mind into the map. Are you the representative? Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, it's a question. I think China is the biggest population in the world. My presentation maybe can. Uh, how say represent uh, uh, almost the Chinese people, the traditional ideas and uh, the Chinese people's uh, thinking. But uh, I cannot say it's uh, represent all of Chinese, the 1.3 billion people thinking. And uh, um, but uh, general speaking, I think uh, the traditional uh, Confucian culture affect modern Chinese people thinking. Um, uh, <coughs> very deeply affect. For for example, just now I said the persons is a relational perspectives in Chinese people. Uh, 
mind and uh, for um, in the Oriental cultures. And it's a quite uh, different concept uh, between uh, with the um, modern West, uh, um, modern Western concept of independent persons, right? Yeah, in China, the family is a basic unit in the society, and uh, decision making is usually by the families and not by the individuals. But uh, um, and uh, the doctor physicians in hospital uh, always to discuss the di uh, serious dis diseases with families inside to the patient themselves. I think it's quite different from the Western cultures. Uh, physicians should, uh, uh, in Western culture, physicians should uh, um, respect individuals' autonomy highly, and even uh, the physician will, uh, uh, physicians will follow the patient's will, even they believe uh, uh, the treatment and the any kind of decisions will uh, against the patient's health and the life. So I'm, it's I'm the quite. Uh, oh, this, uh, it's okay. Uh, Tim, thank you. Oh, okay. well, it's somewhat related to that, I think. Uh, I think in your talk, you mentioned about uh, the Confucius, Confucian concept of life beginning with birth, and that so that the, the fetus wasn't, you know, really human, it was valuable or something like that. I'm kind of wondering how that affects, uh, for instance, in modern China, you know, I hear a lot about you know, the abortion issue and, and, and say even forced abortions or something like that. Now is that, is that something that is, um, you know, that uh, rationalized uh, based on the Confucius idea that, that life doesn't start until birth? Is that related? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's a um, have a relationship with the Confucian ethics, Confucian thought. Yeah, um, from Confucians, the birth is beginning of life and that's the end of life. And uh, uh, for for the embryo and for the earlier fetus, when it uh, present uh, no re uh, personal perspective uh, before born, they will not regard it as a person, independent person. So, um, and it is a fact uh, Chinese people's thinking about until now. So, um, from Confucian point of view, they accepted, accepted the earlier abortion with some um, certain conditions and uh, um, do not think it is uh, as a killing a person. So, when the abortion took place, uh, nobody said that the person uh, was killed or something. Thank you very much, Bao-Chi. Thank you. Oh, so yeah, okay. um, yeah, I was curious about Thank you. So now, from the Chinese mind, uh, now we're going to talk about the Japanese mind. <laughs> and I could think of no better person to ask a talk about the Japanese mind than a typical Japanese man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for wonderful introduction. Uh, my name is Shinagawa. I am a medical doctor, but today uh, I am too old. Therefore, I explain my MD, mental defect or memorial defect. <laughs> Uh, about two months before, I met in Seoul, Professor Darryl Mesa, in Seoul University, to attend the Fourth Asian Bioethics Congress. Uh, on that occasion, uh, Professor Mesa asked me, please come to next February to Tsukuba TRT8 and speak something. But I have forgot to complete the uh, subject of topics he asked me. Uh, about 10 days before, I remember. And I wrote him a uh, letter using fax. 
uh, what is the topic that I was asked in Seoul about two months before? He said, Japanese mind. And he sent me a, on email uh, many, many papers. Many, many papers. Uh, <laughs> my former speaker is Ms. Su. Uh, she is planning to speak uh, Confucianism. And uh, my next speaker is uh, discussing uh, Taoism. Taoism. Um, <laughs> I'm sandwiched. <laughs> what should I talk about today? Uh, and I think, I thought uh, about uh, 10 or 12 hours. And I picked up uh, seven topics uh, that is written in this. Uh, this uh, six topics were cited from my small monograph. Uh, two years before I published uh, a small book in Germany, Tradition, Ethics, and uh, Medicine in Japan. I picked up three uh, topics from that book and sent to uh, Professor Mesa. But uh, today, uh, uh, my <laughs> Mental defect is always changing. And I would like to talk about two topics. The first is uh, the uh, short history of uh, Japanese uh, philosophy and religion. The second is the uh, main difference between uh, Japanese culture and Chinese culture. Uh, Japan is uh, old and new country. Only 6,000 or 5,000 years history. Uh, but uh, uh, prehistoric Japan, almost nothing is written because we have no uh, characteristics, no uh, Chinese characteristics. Uh, there are no history. The first book on Japan was published in the 6th century, Kojiki and Bifon Shoki. Kojiki and Bifon Shoki. Uh, uh, in that book, uh, Japanese old ancient story uh, is described, but uh, as far as I remember, Japan is a country of uh, bio natural centric country bio natural cosmos centric country not uh, anthropocentric not theocentric bio cosmo or uh, <coughs> natural centric country uh, <coughs> the first god for Japanese people is the Son, not Jesus Christ, <laughs> not Confucius, <laughs> yeah, no, not uh, Mohammed. <laughs> Japanese God is the Son, the Son. Japanese national flag, do you know? Japanese national flag, Shinomaru, <laughs> rising sun, now, sinking sun. <laughs> Japanese, <laughs> yeah. Japanese, uh, yeah. Japanese calendar starts from Sunday. Uh, Monday is gets your Monday. Tuesday, Tuesday is fire day. Tuesday, fire day. Wednesday, water day. Thursday is forest tree day. Yeah. Friday is gold, metal. Saturday is earth, earth. Biocentric. Japanese culture is biocentric, not anthropocentric, theocentric. Okay? Can you understand? Japanese, yeah, uh, January, the first month. 
so much. Uh, February, very cold month. Uh, Kisarani, Kisarani. Uh, April, uh, yeah. March, March is uh, brown month, brown month. Brown month. Uh, May is uh, green month. Yeah. August is hot month. <laughs> September is cold month. Yeah, September. In, yeah, uh, Western language uh, month is almost God, Norwegian God, Romanian God, Greek God, Mars, August, August. Uh, Japan is a country of biocentric, natural centric, not anthropocentric, not theocentric. <coughs> Nature country. That is a great history of Japan. That is my first topic today. The second topic is the main difference between China <laughs> China is a large country, almost the same size of North America, or Europe, Australia, a large country. Uh, 24 times of Japan. Japan is a small country, small country, relatively large, medium-sized for island, Honshu Island, Kyushu, Shikoku, and Hokkaido, for island. <laughs> Only uh, 24th of China. China is large. Uh, China, the eastern half is plateau, plateau with large river, Hoa, Yellow River, Yangtze River, and South Pearl River. <coughs> Uh, every river has more than 3,000 or 4,000 kilometers. Japan is a small island. From the north to the south, around uh, 3,000 kilometers. But from the east to the west, only 200 or 400 kilometers. Narrow. <laughs> From that narrow island. Narrow island. Therefore, Japanese river, the longest is only 350 kilometers. Shinanogawa, uh, Tonengawa, Yoshinogawa, less than 400 kilometers. Usually only 150 or 200 kilometers, but Yansi River more than 5,000 kilometers. Hua River more than 5 kilometers. Padu River more than 3,000 kilometers. Large country. And China is a mono, three, no, 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 March, whole, racial country. Man, United people of China. <laughs> United people of China. Japan is a mono, racial. Only Yamato Minzok, only Nihonji. Today, something changing, but uh, Japan is usually mono, racial, mono, language, mono, religion country. China is March, Russia, United People of China. There was the last enemy of the United States, the United People of China, someone says. And that is not my opinion. <laughs> yeah. There are many, many uh, differences. Chinese people are very uh, uh, I have forgotten. <laughs> Mental defect. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, logical. <laughs> logical. Chinese people is very logical. logical. Japanese is not logical. Illogical. Illogical. I'm typical Japanese. Illogical. Chinese is very logical since the era of Mencius and Confucius. And Rao, a very good. Japanese is not logical, illogical, but sentimental and emotion, emotion. Japanese people, sentimental, emotion. And uh, which is more ideological, ideological, 
which is more into China is a communist country, many persons say. But Chinese people, not so ideological, more probably commercial, commercial people. But Japanese more ideological, Japanese, no, Yaskuni Jinja, and so on. Japanese. Many people, Chinese people is uh, uh, socialistic. No. Japanese people is more socialist. Japanese bureaucratic system, more socialized. Mm -hmm. Japanese uh, system, some, some Russians say, my, my old friend when came to Moscow to Japan. We, Russia, hoped since Lenin, Trotsky, to establish to this Japan like country. <laughs> Russian said, Russian communist said. Japanese uh, system is competitive socialism. Uh, Lenin's uh, Soviet Union was uh, socialism without competition. Competition, only cooperation. Only cooperation is socialism. But, uh, Japanese system is competitive socially. Many uh, industry, many uh, companies, uh, American style competitive. But uh, government are uh, controlling the people under the principle of social. Japanese system is competitive socially. Russian system was uh, pure socially. And in this question, yeah. And, uh, logic, yeah. And another uh, difference between China and Japan. China, Chinese people is wrong sightseeing. Wrong sightseeing. They are thinking about 100 years later, 200 years later, post millennium, they are thinking. But Japanese people very short sighted. Uh, if you discuss next next year, crazy. <laughs> you must think only this year. <laughs> Japanese people is short sighted. <laughs> Chinese long sighted. I'm thinking, thinking about the whole meeting. I'm thinking whether I am alive or not. Next year or not, I am always thinking sightseeing Japanese. And <coughs> Japan is a poor country. Poor country. China is a rich country. But too many population. Too many population. Japan occupied, Japan has occupied by mountains, more than 80 percent, 80 percent, 85 percent is mountains. Only 10 or 15 percent can live in Japan. Is a very poor country. No petrol, no petrol, no natural gas. China is a wide country, but too many population. Mm -hmm. Uh, the last topic, <laughs> the last topic. Uh, China is uh, uh, relatively pure culture, relatively pure culture. Japanese culture is so confused mixed culture. For example, Japanese original, Korean culture, Chinese culture, West European culture, Russian culture, and United States culture globalizing United States, American culture, mixed culture. Japan is a melting pot of old and new, west and east, north and west, and mixed culture. This is my opinion. And there is a main difference between China and uh, Japan. But today's China is very rapidly changing. 
as if the end of the 19th century or beginning of the 20th century is Japan. China is all China. China is China. China means middle ground. Germany, middle ground, middle ground. China, Chugo, Chu, Chu means center. Gok means country, world, center country, Chinese country. Ancient Chinese people, Japanese, uh, Eastern foreign people, Eastern uh, foreign, foreign, Persian people, European people, Western foreign people, Russia, Northern foreign people, uh, India, and so on, Southern foreign people. Chinese believe uh, since. Uh, 5,000 years before, uh, center of the world is China. But China is very rapidly changing, like in uh, 19th century Japan. This is my third topic. This is Japanese mind. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any uh, comments or questions? <laughs> <coughs> Thank you very much, um, Shinogawa Sensei, for your comparisons between China and uh, Japan. And uh, very interesting. And uh, it's from the Japanese view, right? And uh, if I uh, do some comparison with uh, China and uh, Japan, maybe it's have some uh, different ideas. Um, Japan is a developed country, although it's small, but the people very, um, how to say, are very um, respect, appreciate the uh, Japanese people's uh, uh, working hard, uh, spring of working and uh, is, um, and is advanced uh, technologies. And uh, China is uh, huge, but uh, uh, the, with the big, uh, big, uh, biggest populations and still a developing countries. And uh, although it's uh, developed very quickly, dramatically, but it's, uh, the, the basic is to the basic is to law. So still, I don't want to the other countries uh, uh, take uh, China as an enemy, <laughs> and but to cooperate with China and friendly to Chinese people. And um, besides this difference, I think uh, Japan and China also share a lot of common cultures to compare with what investment cultures, right? We can share ideas later. <laughs> Thank you very much. We have uh, many, many common cultures coming. The first teacher of Japan is a Korean and a Chinese teacher. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Any other questions, comments? Okay, well, thank you very much. So, um, thank you. So, it was not provocative enough, clearly. Um, I would like to invite the next um, speaker to continue this uh, discussion of different cultures. Uh, Adina is from Taiwan and for a year in Japan, and she's going to talk about the influence of Taoism at the end of life.
So today, to present my topic of the influence of Taoism at the end of life. 25 centuries ago, in ancient China, Lao Tzu wrote Tao Te Ching, which has led Chinese to live wisely through seeking personal balance and the integration with the cycle of nature. In Taoist philosophy, Tao and Te are the key concepts to explain their attitudes of nature. Tao is the way of nature. Ultimate principle of the universe, if human can recognize and work with the pattern of nature, they may learn to think holistically, seeking their part in the unity of life and respect the nature cycle within and around them. Then, he may enjoy a great harmony and the inner peace of himself. The is the mean of uh, the mean to enact down. It also means personal power to see clearly, to act decisively, and to be at the right place at the right time. The also means seeking the truth in all experience, recognizing nature's pattern and our own. Thus. Follow the Tao and the live in harmony, cultivate and develop your highest potential. Tao and the are the way of life, abandon either and live in confusion. From the Taoist thinking of human life, I have concluded as two concepts related to the end of life. First, the nature is the source of all happiness and the goodness of human life. To follow the natural means following the way of Tao. Life and death are within the natural cause. We are part of the universal pattern of growth, which renews itself in cycles. A cause like moving from spring to winter, like yang followed by yin, which gives birth to new yang. Life and death is just like we have day and night. Thus, to live or to die, such a normal process that should be by the nature. Humans should never attempt to destroy the flow of the nature's core. <coughs> um, to clarify the normally uh, intuitional concept of human state of Taoism, a story of Hubble's husband may help, I hope. Zhen Zi was Taoism's second major author a very wise man. When his wife died, he did not mourn for that. Instead, he enjoyed his singing while people came to give regard to him. When his friend blamed him, he gave his answer as, and she just died. I could not help but being affected. However, soon, I realized the matter of the whole thing. In fact, I looked back to the beginning before she had lied. At the 
very beginning, she did not exist, having no form, nor even substance. But somehow, there was her substance, then her form, then her life. Now, there is another change. She was dead. The whole process is like the sequence of four seasons. While she is lying in the great universe, for me to go about weeping would just show my ignorance of the nature. Therefore, I stop mourning. Whether you agree or not, this story has shown the core concept of thousands attitudes of human death. This kind of commitment about, about death has been exist in Chinese ordinary people's mind for thousands of years that we also found in our research. A research with in-depth interviews was conducted to explore Taiwanese seniors' attitude toward life and the death. The interviews revealed that many seniors in Taiwan accept Taoist philosophy as their attitude toward end of life. We will show you the facts as the following. When we asked the question about life in match, more than one third of people gave a comment, life is a nature cause, which someone can hardly predict or control by themselves. Within this viewpoint, elderly people believe that humans have to follow their fate, respect karma. Human beings are objects of the cosmos, should not expect too much, and just let our life and death happen naturally. How do you see your life? The answer was, just do and follow the natural way and my fate. In this category, many of them have Taoist philosophy to see their life is a harmony action to cooperate with the nature, and they have to accept their fate, which was inherited from heaven. The common word they said was like, do not think or judge too much, try to be at peace with myself, be ready to go, nothing uh, should be lead to violence or struggle, or is my fate. Your personal feeling about health and death. Hell is much more important than longevity. Longevity is fate, but hell is a result of behavior. Those two ideas were quite related to Tao's idea. Even longevity has been decided by the heaven. It was fixed by your fate since you were born. However, we should make an effort to live to the fullness of our life which was given by the nature. When we ask about dying, what do you want from medicine? Amazing. More than half of seniors said nothing, because I'm old enough to live to old called trouble. It should be by nature. We have to accept our death. In that stage, physical is not important. Good death should be without medicine or even that has nothing to do with medicine. Some said they do not try to consider that because what is, be, what is to be well be? Just to live day by day is karma, my fate, has predicted already, let it happen normally, or I cannot imagine that situation. What is your perfect end of life? One third said it was to enjoy the fullness of life. That means aging to death and no disease or, if possible, no suffering. Some wanted to die during sleep or when unconsciousness. A peaceful dying process with spirit or only not in a species or premature death. Some said they have never considered it, for it doesn't matter my fate. We don't know, not important, useless to think about that. Anyway, you die. According to this comment, elderly people has disclosed that is not always a bad thing. The aging death should be blessed 
However, the immature deaths should be such as die in accident uh, or in, in appropriate periods of life are recognized as ill omen, which is what we should avoid absolutely. What do you what do you expect from biotechnology to improve your life and death? Nothing. Do not want. You may see eighty-seven percent. Um, thinking about use of biotechnology to extend their own life, the negative population is larger than when we ask about their old sense of modern biotechnology. Biotech the common reason they hold is, it is against nature rule. Do not believe, far from my imagination, it is enough for me, for young people, not for me. Too much, it is going too far, or it will even suffer more. Does this reflect the Taoist ideas of Wu Wei, to recognize our place in the natural pathway and to cooperate with nature to restore harmony? Looking forward to your comments. In my conclusion, Tao's idea of return to the source, return to nature and the Wu Wei were popular in elderly group. As Tao is describing our human life, it was no form, no substance in the beginning, then somehow there is a form or shape of human body, then life, and the burden is returned to the nature again. People may easily accept their life was just in motion like four seasons and see death as nothing out of ordinary, of, of ordinary but return to the nature. <coughs> this is just accord with the ideas of many elderly we interview. They usually use the word return or go back to my original home to describe their future death. From Taoist view, life and death should be two even parts in the motion of natural cycle. This sequence, like day and night, is up to heaven beyond the interference of man. Thus, life and death are both arranged for the goodness. Life of death, which is dream, which is awakening, which is good, which is bad, we do not know, because we are now only experience the face of living. Taoists do not strive for the goodness, but try to maintain a dynamic balance between good and bad. Thus, from Tao's point of view, there is no necessary to judge the goodness or badness of death. When you are alive, you may please for your life. While you are dead, you may feel peace, peace for your death. Both life and death should be blessed. That is harmony. A natural death act of terminal patient should be viewed as the way of let down to be down. Artificial ways to end life and the life-sustaining treatment to prolong death are both improper to treat human life for their last periods of nature cycle. Both of them can see us against the law of nature. For my discussion point, is age a very important element of Tao's understanding? How to differentiate aging to death and the other form of death, like immature death or disease death? A medical service system, maybe we have to clarify that. In Taoist thinking, do we have right to dominate our life? It makes us reconsider the principle of autonomy and the possibility of in advanced direction, advanced directions. In Taoism, is Taoism a universal thinking that we should appreciate it more? Confucian 
Buddhism, Taoism, Buddhism, which is the mainstream value of senior in our society. Because time is limited, we may list questions for discussion. However, I would like to give some comment about the last question. As a Chinese, our life and death attitude are influenced by Taoism, Confucianism, and the Buddhism. For me, the core concept of them are similar. Those wise men taught us how to feel and act in our life. In Confucianism, they emphasize Ren, that means humanity, Buddhism, Ci, compassion, and the Taoism, I, that means love. To feel the love and act with love is your in your life is the very important point to make you have no fear in your end of life and death. As Tao is saying that all things of the creature cannot help but love and multiply. That is Tao, the order of nature. Thank you for your attention. As regards to your life and death. Thank you. Um, Ali, yes. Thank you. Just I wanted to have a comparison between these two presentations, one from Baoqi from China and uh, Dina from Taiwan. In China, as we have seen, death is like taboo in China. And it refers to Confucius in, in China. And in Taiwan, it's a part of a life circle. And they consider equal each other life and death. And just like previous, uh, can we refer these two different ideas toward death to the differences between Taoism in Taiwan and Confucianism in China, or maybe we should uh, look for other reasons. Yes. <coughs> when Bao Chi gave their presentation, I was thinking about this problem, this uh, problem too. Um, first of all, I want to emphasize that uh, I interviewed the senior people that um, my is over 60, but a lot of people is around 7 and uh, some around 80 and uh, also have 3 over 90. The total is 112. And uh, before I also think that talk, uh, that talking is a taboo in our society. But after my interview I found that uh, it's not really true because uh, the elder people they like to talk to us the interviewer, not her family. When I ask them, you speak such a lot about your future death, since you don't, it's nothing terrible. And uh, did you have a talk with your children or your family before? They said, no, of course, I cannot say that to them. Yeah, because uh, maybe in Confucius uh, philosophy, um, to think about your parents' death is very inappropriate. Yeah. And uh, so children, they will avoid this conversation. Even the elderly people, they like to share their witness for the future. Yeah. And uh, the other thing is that according to Tao's philosophy, um, people will think that it's useless to think about it, useless to talk about it, because it's my fate. What is will be, is will be. Uh, what is should be, will be. So it's useless to talk about that, to concentrate on, the, on this topic. And they will say, uh, yes, of course I ask, uh, you want to be sent to the hospital in your last stage? Most of people say, well, uh, if it just happened like that, okay, I have, uh, I have nothing to do with that because you cannot put your children in a conflict situation to avoid them to do anything that, uh, that is according to the social norm. 
Yeah, they, they prefer to suffer them, themselves, but to keep the priority of the social norm. So this is very uh, interesting situation. Yeah, they only talk to some people, not the family. Did I answer your question? <laughs> With regard to Ali's question, I think on one hand, uh, Confucianism think, um, think life is the most precious thing and death should be avoided. But uh, on the other hand, I think Confucianism consistent with the Taoism. They all think the birth <coughs> and the life and death are destined by fate and they reflect the view of heaven. And if one has a good birth and a peaceful death, that uh, the person uh, fulfill the, the, the mankind. Uh, just, uh, I think, uh, for some, uh, this sound is different, but uh, sometimes uh, co consistent with e each other. Just uh, uh, to respect the uh, uh, birth, uh, the life and death naturally, not to, to uh, change by human power. Thank you. Um, we have several each in a row, please. Yeah. All right. And then I'm seeing the Thank you. I would like to ask you that the, the social perception of the organ transplantation it, it seems unnatural. So, what is the culture? The elderly people? The, oh, the elderly people and also generally how they accept or not accept. First of all, young people, they, they have an uh, open mind to accept this organ donation. Mm -hmm. Many of them, they sign the donation card. No, I, I, yes, no, not only donation, actually how... How, how do they... Yeah, but... Uh, the how many? In other words, how many? I, I don't know. I'm sorry, I didn't check that. But uh, since I always go to the hospital, I know that in the hospital, the doctor will respect family's decision yeah, yeah, yeah. first, like in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That means family's decision and uh -huh. family's agreement is the very priority. Yeah. Yeah. The one point is Dr. Wang gets trouble. The second thing is we thinking that you want to keep a family harmony, mm -hmm. that individualized yeah, is not yeah, so important yeah. like yeah. in the Western same country. Japan. Yeah. Yeah, same in Japan. Yeah. So that Almost a feeling of the similar in Japan, right? Yes, mm -hmm. culture. I think Japan adapts a lot of Confucian philosophy in society. I just feel that when I stay here for several months. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 quick, quick. Uh, Steve, you are next. <coughs> oh, one of the, the interesting things about um, Chinese history, and, um, uh, and I, I, I teach a, a course uh, at the university on this, an Asian civilization course, and my students are always fascinated by it, is how uh, these two value systems, Taoism and Confucianism, uh, can coexist peacefully for so long, and uh, which I, I guess the answer is that the, the way they complement each other and they balance each other, but, but also uh, one thing I didn't hear uh, expressed is how, uh, I guess at least historically, Confucianism has always been more associated with, with the, the public side of Chinese life, government, the ruling elites, a lot of it has to do with um, uh, be behavior of, of, of rulers uh, and, and, and uh, uh, how the virtuous ruler is to, to, to act, whereas Taoism tends to be more the um, religion of the masses, it's the private side of people's lives. So Chinese can at the same time in their daily public life be Confucian and then go home and behind their closed doors they're Taoists. And my question um, is in thinking about bioethics, which side is more influential in shaping the public attitudes toward it. And, and secondly, if I could also ask, 
when bioethics is discussed at the public level in China, do you have representatives from these different uh, uh, philosophies participating? Is there a Confucian expert, a Taoist, a, perhaps even a Buddhist that are involved in the discussion about bioethics policy? Thank you. I wanted to ask about this category of natural because it seems a little problematic. If you have, when does nature stop and human intervention start? If end of life, say, technology is not natural, is, is pain control natural? Is where, is where is that line? And I'm wondering if both of these philosophers were here right now, if we could pull them into the 